Hi everyone, welcome to GTEC. Now we are going to see about Graph Dynamics and its interview tips. So we'll check out some of the introduction about the Graph Dynamics. The first and foremost definition for the Graph Dynamics is nothing but it's considered to be the compressible flow that is called as Graph Dynamics. So the compressible flow is considered to be the branch of fluid mechanics that deals with flows having significant changes in fluid density. Gases but not liquids display these kinds of behavior. We have the question define the match number in terms of bulk modulus of elasticity. The answer is match number is a non-dimensional number and it is used for the analysis of compressible fluid flows. We will move on to the next question. Distinguish between static and stagnation pressures. In stagnation pressure state, the velocity of the flowing fluid is zero. Whereas in terms of the static pressure state, the fluid velocity is not equal to zero. So you can see the depiction of static pressure over here and the stagnation pressure over here. Here we go with the next question. Differentiate between the static and stagnation temperature. The actual temperature of the fluid in a particular state is known as static temperature. Whereas the temperature of the fluid when the fluid velocity is zero at zero elevation then it is said to be called as stagnation temperature. So this is all about stagnation and static temperatures. Here we have the next question. What is the use of match number? Match number is defined as the ratio between the local fluid velocity to the velocity of sound. In terms of the critical match number, this is considered to be a dimensionless number at which the fluid velocity is equal to its sound velocity. We have the next question. If an aeroplane goes to higher altitudes maintaining the same speed, the match number will remain constant. Say true or false? The answer is false. The reason is that at higher altitude the sound velocity A will decrease and hence M. M is nothing but the match number. So the match number will increase. We have the next question. We got to show HS that is how show diagram for the flow through a nozzle. Show how the stagnation properties gets affected. The answer is 1 to 2 that is isentropic expansion and 1 to 2 that is equal to adiabatic expansion. It is assumed that the exit pressure is same for both the cases. So these are the two cases. But stagnation pressure at the exit of the adiabatic process will be less than the isentropic pressure. But in terms of the stagnation temperature, it remains to be constant. Let's move on to the next question. Define match angle and match wedge. The answer is match angle is formed when an object is moving with supersonic speed. The wave propagation and changes are smooth. Other than this, when an object is moving with hypersonic speed, the changes are considered to be abrupt. Hence, for a supersonic flow over two-dimensional object, match wedge is used instead of match cone. What is mean by isentrophic flow with variable area? The answer is a static one-dimensional isentrophic flow in a variable area 
passages is said to be called as variable area of flow that is nothing but dysentropic flow the variable area we got the next question what will happen if the air flowing through a nozzle is heated when the air flowing through a nozzle is heated the following changes will occur the changes are velocity of air will increase increase in temperature enthalpy pressure increases and also there will be an increase in entropy we got the next question now what is mean by normal shock when the shock waves you can see the shock waves this is normal shock wave so when the shock waves are right angles to the direction of flow and the rise in pressure which is considered to be in abrupt then it is said to be normal shock waves here we go with the next question what is mean by normal shock as applied to compressible flow compression wave friend being normal to the direction of compressible fluid flow and also it occurs when the flow is decelerating from supersonic flow the fluid properties jump across the normal shock you can see how the normal shock compressible flow is over here we got the next question it's a kind of statement consideration as well shock waves cannot develop in subsonic flow we got to state the reason for that so the reason for that is shocks are introduced to increase the pressure and hence it is a deceleration process therefore shocks are possible only when the fluid velocity is maximum thus we can conclude by saying that the shock waves cannot develop in subsonic flow we have the next question define strength of a shock wave the strength of the shock wave is defined as the ratio of increase in static pressure across the shock to the inlet static pressure so this is the strength of a shock wave we'll move on to the next question define oblique shock where it occurs so the shock wave which is inclined at an angle to the two dimensional flow direction is called as oblique shock you can find the oblique shock over here so this is the one and also when the flow is supersonic the oblique shock occurs at the corner due to the turning of supersonic flow you can find out the supersonic flow over here we'll move on to the next question what is brand mayer relation and what is its significance the answer is the fundamental relation between gas velocities before and after the normal shock and the critical velocity of the sound is said to be called as brand mayer relation here we have the next question we got to define fano line the answer for the question fano line is nothing but the locus of the state which is satisfying the continuity and energy equation for a frictional one in terms of flow is said to be called as fano line so the next question is define the term fano flow fano flow is nothing but a steady one dimensional flow in a constant area duct with friction in the absence of work and heat transfer so this is said to be called as fan of flow we'll move on to the next question define two practical examples where the fan of flow occurs
these kinds of fan of flow will occur in aircraft propulsion engines and in air conditioning ducts and also in the flow of oil in long pipes so here we have the depiction of aircraft and air conditioning these are considered to be the two practical examples where the fan of flow occurs let's move to the next question give the effect of increasing the flow length after reaching critical condition in a fan of flow so the answer is nothing but the mass flow rate will increase only up to the critical condition and is constant afterwards therefore if the length of the pipe is increased afterwards it will not give any effect Let's move to the next question. State assumptions made to derive the equations for isothermal flow. The assumptions are as follows. The first one is all about the one dimensional flow with friction and heat transfer. The second one is nothing but the perfect gas with constant specific heats and molecular weights. And the next one is On account of constant temperature the friction factor may be assumed constant along the duct So these are the assumptions which have been made to derive the equations for isothermal flow Let's move on to the next question to find the term relic flow The one dimensional flow in a constant area duct with heat transfer and without friction is said to be called as relic flow you can find the relic flow over here which is depicted let's discuss about some of the assumptions which is made in relic flow so the assumptions are nothing but perfect gas with constant specific heat and molecular weights are considered to be the first assumption which has been made in relic flow The second one is all about the constant area duct with one dimensional steady frictionless flow with heat transfer. So these are the assumptions made in Rayleigh flow. Here we go to the next question. What is mean by a jet propulsion system? Jet propulsion system is the propulsion of a jet aircraft or we can say some other kinds of missiles which is by the reaction of jet coming out with a high velocity the jet propulsion in which it is going to be used when the oxygen is obtained from the surrounding atmosphere so these are some of the views of the jet propulsion system we got the next question How will you classify propulsive engines? The jet propulsion engines are classified into air breathing engines, rocket engines, that is in terms of rocket engines which do not use atmospheric air. We got the next question. list the different types of jet engines the different types of jet engines are the first one is turbojet the second one is ramjet engine and the final one is turboprop engine so these are considered to be the different types of jet engines We got the next question. Give the components of a turbojet. The components are the first one is diffuser, second one is mechanical compressor, the third one is combustion chamber, 
The fourth one is turbine and the final one is exhaust nozzle. So these are the components of a turbojet. Can see the turbojet depiction over here. Let's go with the next question. What does it mean by specific impulse? If you see about the specific impulse, it is the thrust developed per weight, it's per unit weight flow rate through the propulsive device. It is a useful performance parameter in aerospace propulsion systems. This is all about defining the specific impulse over here. Here we go with the next one. Define propulsive efficiency. The force which propels the aircraft forward at a given speed is called the thrust force or propulsive force. In terms of the propulsive efficiency, it is defined as the ratio between the propulsive power or else thrust we can say so what is ram effect when an aircraft flies with high velocity the incoming air is compressed to high pressure without any external work at the expense of velocity energy is said to be called as ram effect We have the next question over here. Explain specific thrust as applied to jet engines. Specific thrust is defined as the thrust produced per unit mass flow rate through the propulsive device. So here is a jet engine in terms of specific thrust which is applied on it. Here we got the next question, define rocket propulsion. If the propulsion unit contains its own oxygen supply for combustion purposes, the system is known as rocket propulsion. Thank you for watching this from GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited.